Hi, I'm Nick Moema, and in this video, we'll discover the beam and block technology. We'll take a look at how it works and also go over the pros and cons of using beam and blocks for your project. With that, let's get into the video. As the name suggests, the system is made up of concrete hollow blocks and pre-stressed concrete beams. Let's start by looking at the hollow blocks. First of all, you'll notice that there are interlocking grooves that makes it possible for the blocks to lock properly within the beams. The blocks are stacked one in front of the other to fill the gaps between the beams. The blocks also have good compressive strength, which makes them suitable as a flooring material. Now, you may be wondering why these blocks have hollow sections. Well, there are two reasons for including them. The first reason is to reduce the weight of the block. Because of the hollow sections, it means less concrete is used to make them, which allows the blocks to have less weight. The second reason is minimizing noise. This is possible because the hollow sections trap air and air is a poor conductor of sound. This means that you'll hear less noise coming from above. Moving into the beams, they are called pre-stressed concrete beams. Pre-stressed concrete is a method for overcoming concrete's natural weakness in tension. So to achieve that, 5 mm wire tendons are stretched between stable end anchorage points and concreted over a casting bed before being allowed to cure. The tendons are released after the concrete has achieved the minimum desired strength. The length requirements for each beam is determined prior to casting to avoid wastage. This means that the length of beams can be customized to suit your project. Once the beams and blocks are laid, a screed layer is applied at the top. This provides a smooth floor level on top of the slab. The goodness is the concrete needed ranges from 50 to 75 millimeters, which is less than what a traditional flat suspended slab would need. That's why you can see the BRC mesh on top of the blocks. This will bond with the poured concrete for the screed to make the slab stronger. At the bottom, a layer of plaster is applied to achieve a smooth ceiling finish. Also, plumbing and electrical works can begin as soon as the beams and blocks are placed. The pros of beam and block technology are, one, the fast and easy installation. Once the beams are supported end to end from one wall to the other one, it's only a matter of stacking the blocks. For this project, it took a day to stack all the blocks needed for this lab. So this is a time-saving benefit. Two, less timber supports are needed. This is a cost-saving benefit as it means you don't need to buy lots of timber supports unlike with the normal slab method. The third pro is that you get a stable working platform. As soon as the floor is laid, it becomes a working platform, allowing other construction projects such as walling to proceed. Plumbing and electrical work can start after the blocks are laid, saving you time. 4. No steel trappers are needed. This again is a cost-saving benefit and eliminates the daily cost of hiring steel trappers to support your slab. Steel trappers provide a smooth and rigid support in the process of making a normal suspended slab. The fifth advantage is sound insulation. This is achieved through the hollow sections which break up the sound waves generated on the slab. This ensures less transfer of noise from reaching the lower floor. The sixth pro is less steel fixing is involved. Because of the pre-stressed beams, you save the money and time that would have been needed to bend rebars on top of the slab. This is a huge benefit that comes with the beam and block technology. For this project, for example, reinforcement bars were only used at the edges for ring beams needed for the project. The cons are, one, they are not suitable for irregular plan shapes. Beam and block technology works best in rectangular or square shape house designs. Two, is the issue of limited availability. Here in Kenya, this technology isn't as widespread as the normal suspended slab technology. The pre-stressed beams are made at specialized yards under controlled conditions. This means you can only get them from companies dealing with beam and blocks. And three, 
there's the issue of perception. This goes hand in hand with the previous disadvantage. Because it's an alternative building technology, not many people are familiar with it. And this makes it harder for potential clients to adopt it for their projects. I visited Ecoslabs, and this is how they price their beams and blocks. A single block costs 85 shillings per piece, and a pre-stressed beam costs 495 shillings per meter. You can get your quotation by sending your house plans to the company. This allows you to predetermine the cost of your slab. Contact information can be found in the description section below this video. So that's the beam and block technology in a nutshell. I hope you learned something from this video. And if you did, kindly leave a like to help it reach more people. Also, if you have any questions, kindly leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.